I want to welcome everybody to another In My Feels episode. Um, And this one is actually going to be, I want to bring this back into the same, you know, why the world is in the state it's in. This is going to be a part two kind of abbreviation of my last one. I guess the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of things have been going through my head, you know, COVID and vax, anti-vax, all these type of things that are kind of slowly low-key affecting me, which doesn't usually happen, to be honest. The outside world I know is created by me. So, but this is kind of coming in from left field. So I kind of wanted to elaborate on some of the way, ways I'm feeling and how I'm kind of dealing with everything. But as you guys know, um, you know, thoughts, feelings, emotions, conditionings, everything on the inside creates your outside exterior. So my question for you guys at home or, or listening, wherever you're listening is, um, how are you feeling right now in this moment? And really take the time to listen to yourself um, and how you're feeling and everything else is super important. You know, it's, it's the driving factor to everything you see on the outside. Um, and how am I feeling? I'm feeling pretty excited about this podcast, actually. I've, I've done some prep work. It's always that pivotal moment of where the fuck do I start? Because there's kind of so much, but so little at the same time. Because as you know, the accountability factor for me is very important. Um, and I'm fully aware of my accountable feelings and emotions and everything on the inside creates my whole outside hysteria. So for me, it's a very simple thing. The buck stops with me <laughs> so, as it should do with everyone else. Um, okay. So why is the world in the state it's in, you know, I've spoken about manifesting before and everything in your life is you, um, to the finite detail. And once we understand that accountability, we can then step forward for everything else, um, and I spoke about, you know, collective consciousness. So if you're manifesting everything in your life, whether it's, you know, I, I don't perceive anything as good or bad anymore, but if you do, then the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in your life is you and that, and you're an individual. So you have the, the power to change anything you want in the world, just as we do collectively. Now, imagine every single person on the planet who's manifesting and, you know, attracting everything they want, everything they don't want into their lives. And they're pushing this narrative forward. So if you think about, you know, the way I feel about climate change, I, I, you know, I don't want to believe that the world is in a state because that's me putting my judgments on it, which is not helping the collective consciousness. And again, collective consciousness produces, produces collective results, which is powerful, which is super powerful for both positive and negative aspects um, so if I believe that, you know, we're, we're destroying the earth collectively, then that I'm aiding to that destruction, if that makes sense. And I think we now, what I want to do is, for example, um, before COVID and kind of during COVID and everything else, I can kind of pinpoint how I was feeling at the time, which was adding to the collective consciousness of what I wanted to change, it may not have been positive. It may not, it may have been positive. It was, I wanted to, as you guys know, I wanted to be at home with my family and, you know, raise my daughter and everything else. And then boom, COVID hit, which enabled me to work from home or adapt my workability to a home environment. And I've pretty much been there ever since. Um, but I, you know, how many of us want, want to change our jobs or our life or spirituality or in a spiritual sense or anything that what happened pre COVID, we aided to that attraction of the kind of world shutting down. It was almost like the great reset, which was needed, you know, cities, which were super polluted, had clearer skies, um, wildlife started thriving. There's all these notions and all these things, everything kind of slowed down. So collectively, I feel like that was what we were screaming for as a whole collective. So, and again, anything that we perceive as bad in the world, we are equally to blame for it because we're adding to that, that negativity or that negative aspect to that, that part of the world. So if we think about, I don't know, world famine and hunger and, and everything else, we are aiding into the negative aspect of, of that, that the thing that's happening there. Um, and so we have to collectively now, and, and I'm setting a challenge. I want to set a challenge actually to everyone who's listening to this is a collective consciousness. So when you're listening to this, you're taking in this information and you're collectively thinking about 
how who you are in relation to this this topic or this conversation is very important that we i want to grow a collective consciousness with my listeners and with the people i speak to and the people around me and my family and my friends so that we can perceive everything as this kind of this healed state we are a healed collective we see everything as perfect because we design it so how can it not be perfect you may see things as imperfect, but then again, if we are creating this, then it's in a perfect space. It has to be. It cannot not be any other way. So again, collectively, I want us all to come together and think about positive change, things that we would like to see uh, change within the universe. So, And again, when we see famine and illness and all these type of things, we see us as having something so that they go without. There is, we have to get rid of that notion of... For me to have something, someone has to not have something. There's enough for everyone in, on the planet. And we collectively have to know that for us to attract that kind of abundance for everyone, if that makes sense. Um, and without into a couple of points as well, you know, you can think about every negative thought, thought you've ever had in your life is, con- is out in the ether in the universe, which is spreading amongst whoever, which is just adding to the collective consciousness. So if we can kind of home in on that power and understand that what we are doing collectively, we can collectively make a change. And it wouldn't actually be that difficult. It's just changing your your frame of mind, changing your thought process. Um, and as you know, I dive in on, on manifesting and accountability and everything else. But for us to make a change in the world, we have to understand that we are also the problem. And I think that's the most important thing to step forward, to step into, I would say, the light from darkness, but it's not really dark. It's, it's stepping into that awareness of the power that we all have internally to internalize everything that we want and everything we don't want. And to be honest, I mean, the only peace in all the world that is sustaining is internal peace. So if you want to make a collective conscious change to what you see on the outside in the world, you have to have inner peace within yourself. Because if you don't, then you're adding to the, the, the anti-peace or the negative aspects of everything else on the outside as a collective. And it's easier to change what you are doing than to change someone else, what someone else is doing. And I feel like we collectively, I, you know, we tried to do it in the past, is change someone's personable or change a, try and change a person for the way to fit your morals and your values. But really, you have to change yourself to fit your own. And we have all forgotten what it, we've all forgotten what it's like to be love without condition. I've said this before in the show, you know, we, it's always reciprocal. So if I do something for someone else, it's because I expect something else in return. And we're adding to that, to the, to the collective consciousness. This is why the world is in the state it's in. And it's only, I'm seeing it as something that for me now, I'm not going to be dr- dragged into this kind of, this notion because I am finding inner peace within myself and I want everyone else to do the same to work towards that collective consciousness of peace. And you know, what you'll see collectively and consciously around your universe or your perceived universe is you'll see that because that's what you're projecting and like attracts like you'll attract other individuals who feel the same way. You'll, you know, you'll see the beauty in everything, even in the kind of the hurt and the pain and the, you know, from hurt and pain, everything comes growth. So there's beauty. I see beauty in all of that. Um, And stepping away from everything, I see kind of how the world is collectively clinging on to, you know, the, the, the COVID narrative, which is adding more. The reason why the variants are there is because this has become something of a normal, a normal kind of feeling, a normal kind of emotion. You know, the masks and everything else. And and instead of accepting that we kind of brought this on ourselves. Again, accountability. I'm not going to sugarcoat what's going on in the universe as it's not me. I'm part of it. We are all one. We are collectively creating the narrative of the world or the universe. Um, And I'm seeing this kind of narrative and this notion of, you know, this divide and conquer now between media and politics and everything. And again, you know, I don't, I don't dive into that specifically, but I feel like I need to say something. This, there's this kind of war brewing now, this kind of civil war amongst ourselves of, you know, the vaccine vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. Uh, you know, if you are vaccinated, great. I love you. If you're not great, I love you. Please be responsible in yourself, which is, which is what I'm doing. And I'm, I, I'm not vaccinated. I'm I, you know, 
I had COVID. I, I got over it super quick. My mental state to it was, I understand the fear narrative of the media and everything else. And now this is not medical advice. This is just mental advice of, I understood what was going on. I understand the power my body has to produce healing powers beyond our imaginations. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm conditioning my conditions of how I feel towards health and everything else. And I understand that health is a physical manifestation of the way I feel about myself. So if I'm feeling super stressed and anxious and depressed and all these type of things, which I have done, um, and I, I get from time to time, it's very, it's very limited and very uh, limited, if, if that's even a word. Um, but I understand that when I have a certain thing, it's myself that is attracting it to me. And when I caught it, I was super run down. I was stressed, all these type of things. It was that transitional period of, okay, I've been at home for a little while. What do I want to do? And there's that fear element of, I don't want things to change, but I know that things are going to change. And that's where the attraction to it came. But when it was here, you know, I didn't, it wasn't a fear element. It was almost like, okay, this is happening. This is how I'm going to deal with it. And, and to be honest, it took, I don't know, 12 hours, 24 hours. It was a whole night. And I know some people out there are a completely different boat, but I can only speak for myself. And I got over it mentally. You know, I meditated on it. I relaxed. I can allowed myself to heal. And I think collectively and consciously, I'm seeing this kind of, you know, this blame of everything that's going wrong in society now is blamed on the unvaccinated. But you can't collectively, individually, accountability ability wise we are the master and commanders of our ship so no one is to blame but ourselves individually and that goes for all of us you know the minute we tap into media and we we listen to the narratives of this story of this politicized which is coming now it's, it's the vax versus the anti-vax has become a political statement um which it, it shouldn't be it should be about health and individual health and you know are the people who are getting severely sick are they are they how are we helping them mentally collectively consciously how are we helping them healthily instead of politically? And, you know, he said, she said, all this type of nonsense is not doing anyone any good. So I want to create a collective consciousness within ourselves that we are healed. Our minds are healed. Our loved ones are healed. The planet is healed. And the narrative continues. And in the minute you keep on with the same narrative and you progress it, you progress it every day. You say the same thing every day, every day. 30, 40 days from now, you'll see everything as the perfect alignment and you will become this perfect alignment and perfect alignment with, with, with myself, perfect alignment with the people around you. People, I will become perfectly aligned with you. So therefore we become this powerful entity of change. And it's not this fairy tale change because we're, we're, we're still this human nature. We still have to uncondition everything we've ever been taught and truly now be reborn as ourselves now. It's a very difficult concept because I'm still, I still struggle with it, but I, but I've, it's become the atomic habit for me now to feel good about myself, to look in the mirror and say, I'm okay. You know, today, Lou, you're good. And then once you get to that good plateau, then it's like, today I'm great. What the fuck do I have to complain about? And then you create this collective consciousness of positivity, of love, of abundance, of, you know, the earth healing, of, of anything that you want, but whatever ne uh, resonates with you. And I'm going to read another quote from Conversation with God. And I'll speak about this book. I'm going to change books eventually, but I'm still kind of, this is like something that's new to me, the kind of God concept. I'm not really a kind of a God person or saw someone outside of myself, even though now I've fallen into the narrative. If I'm creating my whole existence in life from the finite detail, then, I, you know, we're all gods. We have to be. How can we not be? We're creators. God is a creator. Again, you have to remove the notion of who or what God is. Is it a man or woman? I think God is everything. Both. All of those things. God, woman and child. Um, so I'm going to read a quote from, from the book, which, which kind of adds into the collective consciousness or the fear-based element of, of everything that I'm seeing now. Fear is the energy which contracts, closes down, draws in, runs, hides, hoards, harms. Love is the energy which expands, open, opens up. Sends out, stays, reveals, shares, heals. Fear wraps our bodies in clothing. Love allows us to stand naked. I love being naked. It's great. Fear clings to and clutches all that we have. Love gives all that we have away. Fear holds close. Love holds dear. Fear grasps. Love lets go. Fear wrangles. Uh, love soothes. Fear attacks. Love amends.
Now, I, I, I don't think I know anyone on earth who would disagree with that quote. I think, I think this is the type of collective consciousness of fear that we are putting out into the world, which is affecting pretty much everyone, including ourselves. So we now have to change the mental state. We have to change the narrative. And again, another quote from, from, from Conversations with God, which I love, which adds to the collective consciousness is, you do love the members of your own family. You simply have a very limited view of who your family members are. You do not consider yourself part of the human family. And so the problem of the human family are not your own. Again, powerful, powerful shit. I mean, we are a glow. We, I mean, collective consciousness is one. So if you can imagine you as an individual are powerful to change the planet, the, the world, the, the, the universe by yourself, if that's what you believe or know to be. Now, if we are separating ourselves, which we are doing from this COVID situation, it was supposed to bring us closer together. It's actually done the opposite. The, the isolation has created habits of isolation. You, you, you now become, we've now, and including myself, I get a little weirded out if I go into big groups, not because of the health aspect, because I like the comfortability of myself or the people closest to me and everything else. I'm now unraveling that, that notion, that, that, um, that habit, should I say, and I'm starting to see the world as one, everybody as one. So then I am accountable for the negative thoughts I put out into the universe, which add up to the collective consciousness. So not only am I attracting everything into my life based on what I put out from internalized. I'm also adding to the collective consciousness of everyone else who's internalized, putting everything out into the universe, which is coming back on the universe. Now imagine every destructive thought you've ever had, every happy thought you've ever had, every loving thought you've ever had, every anxious thought, every negative, positive, every, you know, um, insecure thought you've ever had. That is attracting everything to your life, but it's adding to the collective consciousness on of the whole of the universe, which which is a powerful thing, positive or negative, however you want to perceive it. And to change our reality, we simply have to stop thinking the way we are thinking. And it sounds so simple, but how many of us actually work on changing our thinking? And do we want to, you know, take this life, you know, this life consciously or unconsciously with awareness or lack of awareness? As the cause of, of my experience or the effect of it. I know what my answer is. I, I, I want to be aware. I am aware of, of my feelings, of who I want to be. We are all, and you know, we're always in a process of creating every minute, literally every minute of every day, turning out a new manifestation as fast as you can think. And creating doesn't necessarily just mean doing something creative. You're always creating even listening to this podcast, you are creating new ideas, thoughts, your reactions to this podcast. You're adding to this collective consciousness. So I want us, this is going to be my task for all my listeners. I want you guys to hit me up on Instagram, message me how you're feeling, um, leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, however you want to get a hold of me, you know, at Lou Shama or whatever. I want to hear from you how you are changing the collective consciousness within yourself. How are you perceiving the, the deforestation of, of, of the planet, how you're perceiving the, the you know, the, the pretty much extinction of, of certain animals and, and our oceans are depleting, oxygen level, all this type of thing. Again, I am going to focus on the positive aspects and what I can collectively add to that. I see the world as constantly producing abundance. I see the world as love. I see the world as healing. I see myself as healing. Because it all starts from you. If you are healed, if you are at peace within yourself, then the universe is at peace for you. And if we can all get to this conscious, collective place and forget all this bullshit of, you know, I'm seeing too much of it. You know, the vaccine, anti-vaccine, this, that, this. If you see yourself as healthy, and I mean truly know yourself as healthy or perceive yourself as healthy with a healthy mind, healthy ideas, healthy thoughts, your universe is healthy. I can't put it any other way. And, and, and another way we can change is we all have free will. This is, this is what we, 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 this is the gift of why we are born into this time. We have chosen to be born in this time to experience the th fruits of our history, not to, to make the same mistakes as history, but to question history 
and adapt your mind and your mental state and everything else to to create a new history. And we have the free will. That's the law of the universe. We are the attraction, the manifestation, the magnet, however you want to call it. So I'm trying to live into a place now. Then this is key is where I don't judge the state of the world. How many of us judge the state? Well, the world's fucked. I've said it too many times in my in my past to even become to even be aware of the notion of how detrimental that is to the collective consciousness that the world is fucked. And now I change the collective consciousness or myself is what do I wish to change? But not from outside myself. I go with from within. And I think that is is the lesson I'm learning and the lesson I'm trying to bring to all you guys is collectively we can make a change. We can have as much or as little as we want. We can have peace in the world, no wars, no famine, all these type of things, if that's what we want within ourselves. And I think I'm going to end it there just because I feel like, you know, I don't want to, I can go on about this stuff all day and I I love talking about this stuff, but I want you guys to kind of, you know, again, send me messages, however you're feeling, um, collectively, consciously, how you've seen the world, how you're going to make a change to your collective consciousness within yourself. Um, And I want to bring this podcast into a collective consciousness, into a positive space. I want you to listen to this and, and, and grow and grow from within yourself to understand that you are a God. You are a creator. You are a manifesto. You are everything beautiful and perfect about why we were made and what you are supposed to be doing and who you're supposed to be in relationship to where you are now. As always, I, you know, I want to thank you guys. I love you all. Um, it's been amazing.